Perhaps you can aid me in locating Hytham. What is your purpose with him? I have brought a sampling of goods from Ireland. That is, if I can bring my ships to dock. Azar! I see you've met Eivor Wolfkist. Ah, so you are Eivor. In fact, I bring you a message from Ireland. I know no one in Ireland. The letter is from Dublin's king. Sadly, I seem to have misplaced it. The king of Dublin? Why would such a one write to me? He wishes to expand trade to England. The purpose of my bringing goods here. Azar is from the east, but lives in Ireland now. But in matters of trade, Azar, your king should petition Ranvi. He claims to know Eivor. He asked me to accompany you on the trip there. I know no king, and I'm certainly not about to journey to Ireland. But first, Azar, you must build a trading post. In fact, where is your trade ship? Ah, oh, yes. An unfortunate incident most concerning. Trading rivals have blocked the river and thus my goods. A blocked river hurts all Ravensthorpe. Stay. I'll put things right. As you see, Eivor is a person of action. Find me later, when the river is safely clear. Of course, my friend. I thank you, Eivor. I will find the king's letter in the meantime. You keep insisting that I know an Irish king. It is a fantasy. Where did the what others manner go? of king is it that sends me letters from Ireland? Here is the blockade to be cleared. I should be cautious around here. open. Thank <laughs> you. 
so-called King of Dublin. Azar, the river is clear, save for a few bodies and sticks. Your goods will get through. Your reputation comes honestly then, though I am not sure about the name Wolfkist. The scar on my neck. Ah. My Viking name would then be Azar One Eye. Thank you, Azar One Eye. My men will help construct your trade post. Then I am twice debted to you. If ever you change your mind about Ireland, I will be found in the trade post, once built. Oh, and I found your letter. Here. <laughs> My cousin Barith is alive, and King of Dublin. The Nornia never failed to delight. Eivor, are you prepared to go to Ireland? Azar, you did not tell me the king was my cousin. It was most amusing this way, was it not? A little mystery. I prefer to know what is what. But it was a pleasant surprise. He's eager to see you. Shall we set sail? Yeah, I would like to see this land. And my cousin Barith. Ireland, a patchwork of petty kings jostling for hills and pastures and green, green glens. My adopted isle. Azar, how is it that Barith, as nose as ice, is king of Dublin? Dublin is a Viking city, Eivor. But in fact, merchants and beggars come from all parts to parade in its muddy streets. Oh, to think of Barith as king of a city. It perhaps sounds grander than it is. Ireland has many, many kings. They litter the countryside, and Barith's throne is not secure. Flan Shinna calls the tune. Who is he? Soon to be crowned High King of all Ireland. Flan distrusts Vikings, though he needs them. Barith will find a way. As a boy, he wasn't much of a fighter, but somehow always came out all right. I'm sure what you say is true. Certainly, he is loved by his people. Your crew can find lodging here. Come, let us find Baris. Hey! Eivor! Blood of my blood! Look at you! You have on thrust us cheekbones! <laughs> and you, the seven-year-old, lives in you still. It has been a long stretch since we pelted old Ganfrid with apple cores. <laughs> he never forgave us that. And Sigurd in the clan? How goes with all? There is much to tell you, Barith. But let me breathe your Irish air. 
Thank you for keeping my ports from being set ablaze in my absence. My ports? Yes, old man. I can rule my city even without you here. Eivor, you arrive in good time. I'm hosting a feast in honor of my son, Sifrid. He is 17 today. A 17-year-old son? And rather a difficult boy at that. Come! There's much to show on the way to my castle. A kingship, a son, and a castle. Truly, you have a fine life, Bahar. Castle? It is a wooden house. Finely crafted, to be sure, but in Shiraz, it would be home to a middling rug merchant. Lead me to your rock merchant's wooden hovel, Barith. Just look at her docks! We babe of a city, but the biggest port in all Ireland. You cannot appreciate Irish air without enduring the stench of our docks. You'll find yourself adrift mid-sea. Fresh fish. Hazar told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading, is all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I'd trust my commerce to, old man. You let him call you that? I call him worse things. Forrest, my king! I still owe you a horn of ale. This is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. This is for me. The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? I just want to get a feel for how the bow handles. That's sure. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go! It is a very nice bow. Thank you, Barrett. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, cousin. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. <laughs> I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beat. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. Azar told me that it is a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home. <laughs> my only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. Here we are. Please go enjoy yourself. I hey, must have a word with Boris my son. Cousin. Come meet the him. Grand Duke, isn't it? Hi. 
Enjoying yourself. It's great, Crack. It's a fine thing to celebrate future King Siegfried. I'm curious. How do you feel Barith has done as king? Oh, he's done a lovely job he has. Likes to throw feasts. Invites us common folk. More host than king, perhaps, but he's a fine man, and the city has never been busier. Can I ask, what is your life like in this city? Well, there's a fair amount of work, isn't there? Hauling crates, shoveling muck. I'm a tanner myself. Long days stripping hides and dousing them in cow piss. You can probably smell the stench. I can. Enjoy the feast, friend. You as well. Sigrid! I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the ass. Enough! Eivor, my son, Siegfried. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? I was looking forward to meeting my cousin's son. So, you're the cousin who Da speaks so fondly of. Is the old fool reduced to importing Vikings now? In Norway, you'd be knocked to the ground by now. Come on, then. If you've any guts worth respecting. Fine, whelp. You won't land a single punch. <laughs> I guess I owe you thanks for not beating me bloody. I am not here to quarrel with you, Sigfrith. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? You're unhappy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. But he chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. A visit to Norway might do a young vikinger like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. I've lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bareth can commune with the dead. <laughs> no. His conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Siegfried. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime. Barth. Huh. Why so uneasy? <sighs> a king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew he'd... Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, screaming like a warrior. The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I have fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. In dead of night. Stars in the sky. Moonlight on snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This. A caution from the gods about my vanity. Come. If we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? 
My imagination run amok, but let us away. Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. By Thor's hammer about it. I could sleep a week. Not as spry as the old days, eh? When we'd search the night in hopes of catching a will-o'-the-wisp. <laughs> Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I am not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. I... tis worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain. Keep a sharp watch. Brigands rove the streets tonight. You can be sure of me, my king. I am always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Barret. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into this sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept silver to lie low. For a week or two. But then he'll be back, and back again. I can remove this blood, once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your gods' sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor... I have never been so happy. Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfried may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flan on Rise of Sun. Place. I need to learn more about Thorsey. Oh, 
Morning, Siegfried. Eivor. It was a rough night. I drank too much and I am desperate to calm my belly. I cannot help your belly. But could you tell me what you know of this man, Thorstein? Ah, Ta told you I tried to join his gang, eh? Thorstein is a real vikinger. Like you, but louder. You weren't allowed to join. Too young and gangly. Amar wouldn't even show me where his hideout is. Tell me a bit about this Amar. Likes her ale the way kittens like milk. Spends her time getting tiddly on the docks, chatting up passersby. I will speak to her. Perhaps Thorstein will regret not letting you in his gang. Listen to me. If you're smart, you won't cross Ama. She's a vicious fighter. What are you drinking, friend? The finest ale in town. I like fine things, so you have my attention. What are you doing here, darling? Looking for a good drink and good company. <laughs> You've stumbled into the right ale house. Excellent ale and better conversation. The ale leads to chatting, leads to... Well, who knows? <laughs> Let's find out. Is that all you can do? Ooh, you are wicked! You are a compelling woman. What is it you do? You may have heard of Thorstein. I'm one of his most trusted friends. I have heard of him. Very impressive that he trusts you. He's like a brother to me. A not very bright brother. He entrusted me with the key to his secret lair. He has a lair? I would very much like to see that. Over in Dubke Landing? Sorry. Thorstein would get all pouty. But perhaps you'd like to join me for a meal? I'd rather join you for something else. <laughs> Can't wait to find out what that is. But hold that thought. I don't feel well. I best move about a bit. Won't be gentle I need to get that key from her. If I'm careful, I can avoid a fight.
line. Now to find Thorstein's hideout. Hey. Is this the layer I last spoke of? I don't know, Thorstein. You know how she is. Swilling ale? Now? Now I've got you. Thorstein, my friend. You made a mistake when you came to Bari, Makiva. Oh, gods! You plan to kill me? Give my head to whatever Irish master you and Boris serve. I serve no Irish master. Borscat! If you had any Norse loyalty, you'd be like me. Running the filthy god-eaters from the island. The king of Dublin should look out for Vikings, not try to make nice with those cunts who killed our forebears. Join me. I could use someone with real balls. And the silver is good. Be silent, and I might show you mercy. Common refuse. <coughs> Delivered to your judgment, King Baris. Thorstein. Author of the plot to waylay me and my cousin. Well, you know how it is, Bardish. A fellow needs some silver. A king could fetch Dublin's treasury in ransom. Although I'm not certain you'd bring in quite so much. Say so, Barith, and I will cut out his insolent tongue. On your feet, Thorstein. You bloody <sighs> my floors. <sighs> it is a weighty decision. I would have my closest friend advise me. Eivor, how shall I deal with this ruffian? People delight in public spectacle. Torture the man until he cannot walk, and no one will dare crush you again. Well said, Eivor. I want no blood feud lasting generations, Thorstein. You are not worth the bother. Dublin confiscates your land and silver. I banish you forevermore. Be gone by sundown. Bend the knee and show your thanks. Best to you, King. I've better places to be than Dublin. Father! Why choose weakness? Give every enemy a length of rope. Soon they will carry your noose. Peace. Flanchina will soon rule all Ireland. Flanchina has the power to make or undo my kingship and that of my son. He is the center of all. But Flan distrusts me. He does not believe I'm truly Christian. By showing Christian mercy, I begin to change his mind. You are more shrewd than I took you for, cousin. Maybe Thorstein's release is worth a kingdom. But will mercy be enough? That is why I must build trade. Flan will see that the strength of Dublin's ports is the strength of Ireland. Show him the power of that trade, cousin. Obtain some rare item from afar. Some spice or gem or weapon. And gift it to him at the coronation. It will represent Dublin's reach and help secure my crown. Flan will hear of your Christian mercy. Meantime, I will speak to Asar about a gift. Meet me before the coronation. We will go together. Eivor, welcome to my shop. I came to ask a favor. It is pleasant to strengthen friendships. What do you seek? 
Barith wishes to show Flan the value of Dublin's trade. Could we obtain a gift from a distant land? This is the very problem vexing me. You see, I have acquired land in Rathdown, previously owned by Thorstein, in fact. But the land has gone to Thorn and Dog, smugglers as well. Once cleared, its trading route will serve our heart's desire. In this case, my heart desires an exotic gift, which would be... A spice merchant I know covets pelts of fine fur. Rathdown has an abundance. It is a perfect match. Spice is a gift fit for a king. Thank you, Asar. It is north of here. You go clear it of smugglers while I sit on my ass. No need for thanks. <laughs> I should not be seen in this area. Smugglers. Azara needs them cleared away. You're one of Azar's men. I am. Azar tells me you two are interested in furs to trade for a gift. Il Shoking flaunt the reach of Barith's trade. We'll get the furs you need. How can I help? With trade post supplies. We'll build up the post for better and faster trade. Where would I get these supplies? Monasteries are a good place. They'll have what you need. I'm curious how you and Azar work together. I gather pelts, treat them, and send the fur to Dublin. Azar trades them across the seas. We want to build up the post, both to send bundles of furs to Azar more often, and to store more to send. Ireland must have many trading posts. It does. Each post trades specific goods. Here, we gather furs. But elsewhere, all manner of things. Thank you, friend. Goodbye, Eivor. something. Well done. We'll send the forest to Dublin. Azar will help you find more posts to capture. Goodbye, friend. have arrived from Rathdown. Azar, you have your trade post. In fact, I have heard from the trader himself. 
We have furs enough for Flan's gift. Here, my friend, make the trade. Fine spices that cannot be obtained anywhere else. I will see them delivered for the coronation. Flan will certainly grasp the strength of Dublin's trade. Speaking of, Eivor, there are abandoned trade posts across Ireland. You're suggesting I claim them to increase Dublin's reach. We will gain access to goods we could not otherwise obtain. There is great bounty to be had. I will look for opportunities. Meanwhile, I'll find Barrett. He'll be pleased for your Flan's gift. <laughs> 